Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, Jesse Warden here. It's a beautiful day, finally, in the South. I managed to escape the blizzard in New York by the skin of my teeth. Thank you very much, Amtrak. Tonight, we're gonna verify that we can unit test class-based functions, in this case, static, so static functions that are in classes. I don't promote OOP anymore, but you're gonna deal with OOP code bases. It's the majority of how the world works, so we're gonna be pragmatic, give you useful information. That's how you do that. What are the low-hanging fruits or low-hanging functions that we can actually test? Something easy here, easy win, is roll dice. What's challenging is random. Testing randomness is always difficult. Unit tests that produce random results are actually a bad practice. However, we can do basic math. Simply by eyeballing it, we can say that if math.random produces a number, go down here to node and type in math.random here, it'll randomly produce a number between zero and one. If the case resolves around getting a zero and we multiply that by 20, we're gonna get zero back. Even if the number is significantly low, such as zero, zero, one, 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 or something like that, even that multiplied by 20 is still gonna be significantly low. Round that value, so if we actually copy this code here, place it inside of math.round and see what the results are, we're gonna get zero. There's a lot of room here for errors. Our theme of initial state verification, we're just gonna prove that this doesn't work and we'll fix it later through refactoring. We understand that this is actually not testable code, it's not easily tested about this randomness, and it's nested in a for loop. A lot of things we're gonna to have to refactor and unwind and unravel. Let's do the first thing. Let's get access to this roll dice. The only thing we have to do is expose this class outside the module, export it so others can see it and test it. So we're changing one line of code to make our touches on this file as minimal as possible. Scroll to the top. We'll import it along with our get person now. Scroll to the bottom, create a brand new describe to keep things organized because we're going to start testing the person. Now there's going to be a lot of things in this person class, so let's create another describe internally. And all this is going to do is tab to the right. So when you print out to the screen, it'll tab to the right. Keep things slightly visually organized. Prints out person. Let's use a unit test to just explore how the code works. We're not actually trying to run unit tests to prove anything. We're using them as a safe environment to test code repeatedly. Let's log out the person class and see if it's even there. We'll make this a dot only, so only this prints to the screen, no other unit tests do. We'll run npm test. Cool, we've got our person class there, the whole thing, and you can see it kind of indents, you know, person and then roll dice. So all our tests under roll dice will kind of appear here if they have an output. Let's see if the roll dice is there as well. So we'll do person dot roll dice, rerun our test. Fantastic. So we can touch this function. It's actually attached to the person class. Wunderbar. Let's get a number. And let's just va validate that rolling this dice roll actually is a number. And I'll change this output here to roll dice. So read it like a sentence, right? Person roll dice should return a finite number. And not to sound academic, not nan nor infinity. So somebody's reading this, they go, I don't know what finite means. Like, cool, make it simple as possible. So the number from person.rolldice, 1d20, which seems to be the most common roll die of this game here, we'll say is finite, number should be true. So does this algorithm actually return a number? Why, yes, yes it does. Person roll dice should return a finite number, and it does. And just to be crystal clear, we can actually log it out to see what it is. Although it is random, the test will never fail because it's always gonna return a number, we hope. <laughs> and if it doesn't, this unit test is here to catch our back. So nine, one, right? So it's random. Testing randomness is hard. But we're not interested in the randomness. We're interested in verifying initial state and testing these functions and having a nice safety net.